Welcome to this episode of Case Bites. My name is Dr. Ryan Gibbons. I'm an emergency medicine physician from Temple University Hospital. I'm also board certified in point of care ultrasound, and I run the ultrasound program in our ED and in our medical school. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how to utilize point of care ultrasound in an emergency medicine setting, specifically how it changes care. So let's dive in. So disclosures, I am um, a consultant for Henry Sign here as well. So let's take you to the emergency room here. Uh, the meet cute, uh, as many movies will have you believe. Uh, so here we have a gentleman coming in with chest pain. Uh, this is something we see quite often. The differential here is quite extensive. This could be a heart attack. This could be heart failure. This could be a pneumonia. This could be a blood clot. It's really uncertain when they come in like this, what it could be. A lot of them have many risk factors. Um, so what do we do when an undifferentiated complaint comes into the emergency room? As I said before, you know, we all think about heart attacks. We think about pain and, and discomfort in the chest, but it also could be lightheadedness. It also could be vomiting. You could have neck pain. Um, it's really unclear what could be going on when we automatically just assume heart attack when it could be a number of other things. So it really can be quite confusing to the provider. So let's take a few steps in the right direction. What can we do first and foremost to help our patient? There's a couple things. So you look at x-ray, you look at EKG, you look at blood work. I mean, these are all things that we can do. Unfortunately, only one of them is something that is done in real time that we have immediate results, and that's an EKG. But most of the time, it's non-diagnostic. Unless you have a frank heart attack going on, it's going to be usually non-diagnostic. So where do you go from there? You can order chest x-rays, you can order blood work, but a lot of things like that are delayed. It takes a while for, for the providers to do this, to order it, to have results read uh, and report it. So what can we do that is immediate right at the bedside that is diagnostic? And that's the idea of where point of care ultrasound comes in. Why do we use it? A couple of reasons. It's safe. It's accurate. There's no radiation. It happens at the bedside and you're getting real time answers to clinical questions. And most importantly, Patients love it. They can actually see what you're doing at the bedside. You can show them what you're doing. It makes a huge difference in patient care, not only for their safety and their outcome, but for their satisfaction as well. So in this case, we're going to look at some indications for point of care ultrasound. So as we introduced our initial patient, he has chest pain. So that's one common indication, but you can have shortness of breath, any abnormal vital signs. And even beyond that, really any sort of GI, GU, musculoskeletal complaint, but specifically for someone like this coming in with unexplained chest pain, shortness of breath, or abnormal vital signs, this is where we want to utilize point of care ultrasound immediately. So what are we looking for when we're looking at the heart for, for point of care ultrasound? I'm not going to get in too much detail here because I really just want to introduce the idea of you know, how and why we use it. What are things that point of care ultrasound providers look for? Because this is very different than comprehensive echo, which has a lot of bells and whistles. This is just point of care. So someone developed the idea of the five E's of echo. What are they? They're pretty simple. The entrance, the exit, the ejection fraction, the fusion. And then since they didn't have quite enough they had to come up with something that's a little off the wall called a quality, and I'll explain that in a second. But the entrance, looking at the IVC, the exit, looking at the aorta, the ejection fraction, how well the heart is doing, uh, a fusion, is there fluid around the heart? And then equality is basically the idea of, of the chamber sizes. There, there, should, there should be a certain um, you know ratio between chambers, and if that starts to change, then we see that there, there's something pathologic going. So this is the idea of point of care um, echo that we look at these five things. There's other things as, as you get more advanced, but this is kind of the starting block. So when you first start out, what are you going to be doing? You're going to be using your phase to right probe. And these are the areas on the patient that you're going to look to obtain your views. This is pretty much all I want to say as far as what you're looking for and your views, because it can get a lot more complicated with respect to how to perform this. And the biggest piece of advice 
is just to practice, practice, practice. This is kind of how it looks in your mind of the views that we get where we're looking along a long and short axis and then more of a apical view to, to obtain the different views of the heart here. What are potential things that we can see? So when we look at the five standard views, you have a long axis, you have a short axis, you have a sub xiphoid and an apical four chamber. So fortunately, in this case, these are all normal images here. We have a nice long axis view where we're seeing the left atrium into the left ventricle, the aortic outflow track, and part of the RV. This is our short axis where you're mainly looking at an LV here. You have your sub diphoid, which you see the four chambers, and then an apical four chamber kind of kind of like a longitudinal view here. And this is a normal appearing heart. The ejection fraction looks good. The ratios between chambers look good. There's no effusion. This is a healthy heart. Now let's contrast that to what we're seeing here. So same views, but much different pathology. If you notice this one, this ejection fraction, these walls of the LV aren't moving all that much. We look over here, same thing. There's not much change in that chamber size. That blood is not being pumped out of the heart efficiently, so the ejection fraction is profoundly low. We contrast that to up here, where all of a sudden you're kind of getting this D-shaped left ventricle. That is abnormal. That should not be happening, and you actually start seeing the right ventricular um, become bigger and bigger. That is abnormal. And then the last thing, that other E that we're looking for, a fusion, we're starting to see black fluid accumulate around the heart here, and that's concerning. So the two views on, the, on either side, that's showing cardiogenic failure here. It could be cardiogenic shock. It's a poor systolic output. The top one is something we call a D sign that we often see uh, acutely in PE. There's many reasons that it might be chronic. Uh, and then the bottom one, like I said, is, is an effusion. And these are real-time images. These are all patients that I've had where we've made a medical decision right then and there without having to wait for additional imaging, without having to wait for uh, blood work and things like that. We were able to make a diagnosis and establish a treatment plan immediately. Let's go back to um, our gentleman that we saw in the emergency room. So he was an older gentleman. He had some chest pain, and this is what we're looking at on his ultrasound. So what we notice here is aortic outflow track, which we'll circle back to in a second, was widened. And then we're also seeing fluid around the heart. And then as we get down to the abdominal aorta here, we're seeing a intimal flap. So this is the aorta that's wide. We have an effusion here. And then I'll show you the last part again, which is the flap in the abdominal aorta. So I'll show the abdominal aorta just in a little bit more detail here, where we see a flap here and a flap. And basically that is a tear in the aorta. These are real cases that I've had. This is a one of the true medical emergencies where the individual has an aortic dissection. Not only does he have an aortic dissection, but it's actually causing fluid to build up around the heart, causing tamponade. So you really need to relieve that fluid around the heart so it can expand and contract normally. And then this person needs to go to the OR. So what happened with this gentleman? Um, this gentleman actually went to the OR immediately. We did not actually have a CAT scan. I just wanted to show you what a CAT scan of a dissection would look like. And that's what we're seeing here, that kind of tear in the middle of the, the descending aorta right here. CAT scans are the gold standard in dissections, but they're often delayed. You require contrast and they often can't be used in kidney failure. More importantly, a lot of individuals with dissections are unstable and they can't leave the emergency room. So this is where the idea of point of care comes in, where you can actually diagnose a dissection right then and there, and then make the decision to send that person to the operating room. And this is an actual case we had in the ED. The patient actually did quite well. Um, and again, because we were able to expedite his care using point of care ultrasound. 
So it is the difference maker there. But with anything that we do, there are limitations. So point of care, as much as it pains me to say, is not perfect. It really depends on the provider's experience. In the case of looking at someone's heart or abdominal aorta, we could run into a patient's body habitus. The, the larger patients can be difficult to visualize. Same thing with individuals that have hyperinflated lungs, like with COPD, emphysema, and there's a lot of patients out there. It can really obscure your view uh, of the heart. And then certainly in settings of trauma, you know, if there's any sort of chest trauma, that can really um, affect your, your visualization of the structure that you need to. So the biggest thing to overcome this is to practice, 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 and also more importantly, to know your limitations, but also to know the limitations of, of ultrasound. Ultrasound is great from a standpoint that it can detect secondary signs of dissections, particularly type A, but it will miss them. So it's important to know in the right clinical context, you may need something beyond point of care, but it's there to help narrow your differential, if not give you the diagnosis and help guide your management right then and there. But as always, remember your limitations. Take home messages. So point of care, it's fast. It's accurate. It happens at the bedside. You're making clinical decisions without the delay of additional imaging or labs, things like that. But most importantly, think about your limitations and understand them. And when point of care is not giving you the answers, move on to the next test. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you can also reach out to my colleagues here, the Temple Ultra Squad. We have our Twitter account and our website as well. Um, we're always happy to collaborate and provide more uh, educational opportunities with point of care ultrasound. Uh, and I would like to take a moment to thank you for listening uh, to this episode of Case Bites, and we look forward to having you back for the next episode. Thank you.